Hi, I'm Mark and this is Foothill Paint Fabrication. Today's video we're going to be working on this car trailer here. It's a friend of mine I've known a very, very long time. Uh, we're going to be installing this winch, this uh, Badland ZXR5000. Uh, he's already bolted it down. Uh, I, I'm probably going to pull it off and re-bolt it. He's only got a couple of bolts in it, so I'll secure it a little bit better. Uh, he, al he already installed the toolbox on the front so we can have a place to put the battery and the controls, the relay, circuit breaker, stuff like that. I'm going to try to put a divider in here so he still has room to uh, throw his chains and stuff on one side without worrying about breaking anything inside the toolbox as far as for the winch controls. Uh, we're also going to remove the uh, the tongue uh, jack. It's uh, offset incorrectly so you have to put a uh, floor jack underneath it every time to raise it up to pull it into position. But uh, that should be pretty quick. Uh, we're just going to take that off, uh, cut the welds, move it on the tube and re-weld it and then spray paint it back uh, and that'll be about it. So. Uh, Let's get to it. This sh hopefully it'll go pretty quick. I cannot fit the trailer in the shop, so we're going to be doing everything out here. Uh, and so I'll be doing it early morning before it gets too hot. And then uh, hopefully we can bust this out fairly quickly. I got a few parts to buy, and then we'll be we'll get started on it. Okay, I went ahead and removed the uh, toolbox. It was in my way. I couldn't get to uh, the winch here to install it. He had already started installing, but he only had two bolts in it, and it wasn't uh, attached prop uh, good enough. It might have pulled off with a heavy load. So well, I'm going to go ahead and remove the plate off the bottom of the winch, the mounting plate, and then we'll uh, work out a, a way to uh, attach this down to the trailer bed properly. So we're going to go ahead and pull this off real quick. I had to spool out uh, one row of cable to get the bolt clear here. So if you're ever doing this, you're going to have to uh, put it in freewheel, spool out some cable so you can get to these uh, bolts if you're trying to do it without removing this plate. So that holds off a little bit. Uh, I have these other two that we're going to mark here. I'm just going to hit it with the unibit. One, two, three. All right. So what I'm going to do is I have to, as you can see, the bolts for the roller stick down lower than the mounting plate. So normally, you know, this is designed for like a little uh, uh, four-wheeler or something. So this would stick out past the bumper. Uh, in this case, since we're on a, a trailer, these are going to hit. So I don't want this forced and tweaked up. So we're going to have to come up with four spacers for these bolts so we can get this up off of the uh, trailer deck. And so these bolts are clear so this lays flat and tight. So we just don't want to clamp it down and bend it uh, to our will. I could take these two loose and drill new holes and move this up. But uh, uh, this is probably lined up uh, for the center of the spool so I don't want to mess with that alignment. So we're going to go ahead and just, uh, it's either going to be a stack of washers or I'll see if I have some spacers uh, for this size bolt here. This is a 5 16 bolt. So let me go see what I can find in my drawers and coffee cans full of stuff. And then we'll uh, come back and see about getting this thing bolted down. So couldn't make any spacers. I mean, I could have a buddy across the road that has a lathe, but parting off, uh, solid stock and drilling it and everything is a little overkill just for this so uh, I'm going to resist that urge and just use washers the thing is I have to have the bolts up to mount the uh, motor and the winch back on the plate so we're going to have to just keep those bolts on there and then set that on there carefully and then just get a wrench in there and turn those and tighten it. It's going to take a few minutes, but uh, it'll be it'll be worth it. I don't want the head sticking up and hitting the cable. 
as that cable's wound on there, the best it's ever going to be right now. And then eventually it's going to be a little big. So hopefully, as my friend uses it, they wind it on tight every time. So I got some lock washers for the underside here. We'll get these on. Now, for the underside, I found some uh, fender washers. So since this one's going through the frame, but these other three are only going through the uh, sheet metal or the plate eighth inch for the deck, I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, fender washers under the, underneath there to increase the area. Okay, we got it bolted down. It's on there solid now, straight and solid. So the next thing is to get these, to set the winch back on top and slowly turn these bolts and um, get it mounted back on. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, so we've got, uh, got it mounted solid now. It's on there good. I, uh, I got the washers underneath to space it, so now the bolts aren't, uh, the roller bolts are not uh, pushing and bending the whole plate. So we don't have to worry about anything getting distorted or uh, breaking this casting or something later. All right, we got the battery, or I mean the uh, toolbox, excuse me, mounted back to the trailer. Had to get creative with the bolts. Their holes didn't line up very well, so I had to bend the bolts. So as they went down, then they hit the other hole. But it's on there solid now, so we don't have to worry about it. Next step is to install the largest thing first. Generally, that's how I work. And then you can, the smaller components, you can, you know, you have more latitude to fit them in. So I picked up this, um, this battery tray off of uh, Amazon. And the battery that was bought for this is a Group 765, which was a little hard finding a tray for. But I did, hopefully this will fit. So we're gonna mount that down inside here, off to the side, and the idea is to mount uh, the, the uh, relay and the circuit breaker and stuff like that off to the other side. And I, the way I wanna do it is leave as much space open on the other side for chains and that kind of stuff. So um, I may put a divider in here uh, to try to separate the chain area uh, from the battery and the winch controls. So I also picked up these cool, you gotta love Amazon. You just start searching for stuff and you find cool stuff. It's a lot better than running around all over town. So I picked up these terminals. This is a top post battery he has for this. So this is, uh, it comes with a negative and a positive and it's a cam lock. So he can pull the battery out fairly easily and charge it if he wants. He doesn't have to charge it in the, in, on the trailer. So uh, it's just similar to what's on a bicycle for a front wheel. So you just stick it over the terminal, clamp it down, and you're good to go. This one's labeled negative. And the good thing about it is, so it's got a clamp here for a cable if you wanted to put this on a cable. But it also has these taps here which I will need for the winch uh, so uh, to hook up the power to it. So these are gonna work out pretty good. Uh, I like them and they weren't very expensive. So we're gonna go ahead and work on getting the battery situated and then we're gonna kind of uh, fit all the parts in before we start bolting stuff down. It's, uh, it's the, really the safest bet when you're doing stuff like this so you can figure out how you're gonna make it work. All right, let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna be installing and what we're not gonna be installing here. It comes with a dash mount and an out button, but we won't be needing that because uh, the, the winch is right here. There's no reason to mount this inside the box. So we're, we won't be doing that. Uh, later on, if he wants to install it, we can do that. Uh, it comes with a remote trigger and we will be installing that. Here's the relay that the trigger attaches to and a circuit breaker. So the circuit breaker, obviously it's overload. 
This, I think the specs say when you're pulling 5,000 pounds, it will draw 300 amps. So um, I'm sure this is rated for, it doesn't really say, uh, but I'm sure it's rated right around there. It'll trip and then reset itself. There is no reset button on here, so I'm assuming it auto resets. So the relay will hook to the remote through this pigtail. Now this pigtail is designed to be mounted uh, through like on a near a bumper or something uh, wherever the winch is, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to go through the side of the toolbox because that's it's just a reason to be out in the weather. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount this inside the box so this can plug into it and be out of the way. This other end here is for the dash mount switch, but we'll just deadhead that, make sure it's protected. And then once we figure out where all this is going to go, the idea will be for this just to bundle up and tuck in next to the battery over here and be out of the way. And then when he needs it, he can plug it in and then um, go ahead and use it and then unplug it and coil it up, stuff it back down inside there. Uh, ideally, I think, uh, this button is semi-protected, so I'm going to recommend that he unplugs this every after every use just to make sure this doesn't bounce around in there while he's driving and this button gets pushed by accident and engage the winch. So uh, he chains all this stuff down really good, but we wouldn't want to uh, smoke the motor or just uh, overheat something or screw it up. So, uh, so I'm going to make this, this mount in such a way where he can plug it in really easily and then unplug it easily. And then he could always take this out, put it in the glove box or leave it in here uh, in the box uh, with the battery. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, situate everything, figure out where it's gonna go. And then uh, we'll start bolting down the battery and then we'll, um, then we'll get the relay mounted, find a place for the circuit breaker, and then we'll drill the holes for the wires coming through the box. Okay, so you can see, so I have the, um, the two screws coming from the outside, then I put a nut and uh, tighten them up. So basically I turn these two uh, screws into studs and then I've, I've got a couple of nuts spaced out so they'll back up against this so we're not trying to force that over and it just slides on there. And then we just put a couple of nuts on there and we're able to tighten that to the other nuts and pinch it in there. I've got the cable like this so I can run it over and down and underneath here so it keep it nice and clean instead of trying to bend it around here. So, and then the relay is just right there, just uh, the two screws coming through and I'll tighten up those nuts once we get it all wired up. I'm not gonna try to wire up underneath so I'll keep it loose and then bolt it up once it's all wired up. The other piece will come in right here, just like that. And then the remote will plug in right here just like that. And with the lid closing, it's gonna clear no problem. I already figured all that out. So all we have to do now, I have to find a couple more nuts for that and then cut this cable shorter, figure out what length, and then see if I've got some of these ends or I'm gonna to have to run over to the hardware store and get these ends. So I'm gonna check, see what I got in stock. I might be able to pry this end off of here. I don't know, we'll see. And then just solder it on. So we'll see what we got. All right, I was able to uh, find some connectors that are gonna work out good. So when we shorten these cables up, it'll be uh, nice and clean. So the cables, the relay is right here. And I know uh, I just measured, so I know from the screws down, that's where the terminals are, is about three inches, right? So, uh, but I wanna go a little bit lower than that so when these cables go in, the water, uh, so we can put a little kind of a drip loop in here so the water doesn't run back uh, when the rain hits it onto these terminals. So I'm gonna come down a little bit lower and put them in right here. So I know if I come down four inches, maybe four and a half, right in this area. I've got an assortment of grommets. So we'll drill the hole, we'll pick a grommet, that fits the cable and then we'll figure out what size hole it needs to be and then we'll uh, we'll drill through. So we'll pop this open. It's a brand new set. So we're gonna go ahead and use these. Um, they're very thick, so that's a good good thing. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, I gotta figure out about how big a hole to drill and then we'll drill some holes real quick here.
grab a file. I'm going to deburr that real quick on both sides. Uh, it's, it's kind of stupid to put a grommet in, then leave a sharp edge on the uh, sheet metal. Okay, we'll feed the cables through and figure out what length to cut them once we're ready to assemble. I'll just get these finger tight here. Get these fed through. Now I put the, the yellow one in the farther hole so it didn't have to kink so tight. And then the blue one, obviously we have more room. So they'll just kind of go in straight just like that. So it should work out pretty good. Now they connect to the relay right inside the box here. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and figure out how much to cut off. Now the red one for the relay goes on to the, out of the circuit breaker onto the relay. So we're gonna cut that one as well. Right there. And then the black one, we'll figure that one out here in a second. That goes from the battery directly to the relay. And we'll go ahead and cut this one off right here. All right. Now we need to put ends on all these. So uh, the ends I bought are crimp on. Uh, my crimper doesn't really go this large, so what I'm probably going to do, I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and crimp them on and then I'll probably solder them as well. So I got my propane torch out, I'll, uh, I'll slide, I'll, slide uh, I'll strip this off and go ahead and put it on, crimp it on the best I can with the crimper I have, and then I'll get the torch out and we'll, uh, we'll solder each one of these on. And then we'll put some heat shrink tubing on them and they'll be ready to attach or try to solder them anyways. Now that's on there really tight, so I'm not concerned. You can see it really crimped on there good. But I wanna go ahead and solder them anyways. All right, we got the ends soldered on, the blue and the yellow, the red and the black. So all we have to do now is go ahead and get the cables on the winch itself. This kit is actually really pretty comprehensive. It has a lot of parts in it, it, it little boots for the um, boots for the terminal ends for each end. So we're going to get those tightened up here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, slide these, uh, put these grommets through, and then slide this through, and then I'll put the shrink tubing on later, uh, just to make it easier for me to slide it through the grommet. All right, this relay is really simple. They color coded everything. Yellow from the winch, blue from the winch, red from the battery, and then uh, black from the battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire this up and then hang the relay up inside there. So it's, uh, it's a lot easier to wire. So the first ones I'm gonna do are these winch ones. I'll pull those back out a little bit. So we have a yellow one, it hangs like that. So I just want to figure out how my cables are going to run. And then we're going to bring it around. I want it turned away from the other terminals and then loop down. S something like that. So I know, I, I know how I want to um, tighten it. I want to tighten it in that orientation. Normally, if this was being installed in a vehicle, that this red wire would be connecting to the ignition on switch. That way the winch could not be accidentally engaged unless the key was on. All right, so that's done. So now we're clear of all of them. We'll make sure they don't move around good and tight. The last one is the black one, which is right here. And that'll slide right inside there. We have a tight squeeze up underneath here. Under this relay, that's why we're 
wiring it first and then bolting it to the firewall. You, you could imagine trying to do that upside down underneath there. You would never know if you've got these connected properly and not touching. So always try to plan ahead and get all your connections good and tight. I'm going to loosen that blue one up. Let's move the red one over a little bit. Yellow one's good. Blue and the black look okay. All right. So as you can see, it's all wired up. All right, like I was saying before my battery died, I'm not sure where it happened. I have all the connections made. They're clear of each other. Uh, so the relay is ready to be installed. I got the wires connected properly to the plug. So now all we have to do is spin this up underneath here and get it connected or bolted rather to the toolbox. Okay, just got to plug in the remote. And then uh, let's see how she works. Well, when you hit in, it goes in, and when you hit out, it goes out. So uh, we got wired right. Uh, that spool I had free wheel to pull it back to get the bolts in. So you need to spool this back up. The instructions say with 500 pounds on it, so it spools on there tight. So I will, uh, when I'm done here, I'll pull it tight and then wind it back on there in good and tight form. So that's done. Um, now all we have to do is uh, secure the battery down to the uh, bottom of the box. It's super easy. I've got some uh, 1024 screws. I'm going to screw that tray right through the box uh, down underneath with some nuts. And then that'll be secure. I don't know if I'll put a divider in there. I'll talk to my friend and see what he wants to do. And then we just have to do some cable routing in here with some zip ties and we're all done. And we can move on to the uh, jack. Okay, let's uh, get it all done. Battery secured in the tray. Terminal clamps are on. And we've got everything wired up real clean. It's kind of hard to see back in there. It's a little shadowed right now, time of the day. Plug covers right there. Let's pull the uh, Pull the trigger out, plug it in, and you're good to go. I'm going to put this in a like a Ziploc bag and stuff it down in there so it stays nice and clean. Hopefully it will keep using that. Probably just a gallon Ziploc bag. So that's all done. We're all wired up right here. Everything's nice and clean. It's got to spool that back in real tight. And the next thing we're moving on to is this tongue jack. So we're going to cut that apart and uh, adjust it so it'll work without having to put a floor jack underneath it. So let's get on that next. Okay, we have the uh, jack wheel off the front of the trailer. It's offset wrong. This is uh, just the way it was bought. Bolted on there. I took the snap ring out. Took a little bit, a few tries. Uh, this goes through, snap ring goes on, holds it from, and it pivots on that spot right there. So uh, where we can get to the welds, I had to remove that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the grinder and grind this uh, weld out right here and grind this one out here. Break that loose and then slide it down so this is a lot uh, farther off the ground when he rotates it around so he doesn't have to put a jack underneath it anymore. So right now, even all the way down, this is still too tall. So if we slide this down pretty close to the bottom here and then weld it back on, throw a little spray paint on it, bolt it back on, should be good. So first things first, get the grinder, clamp this thing down, maybe a cutoff wheel down inside here on these welds, hit it with a chisel, hopefully it pops right off. Doesn't feel like very good penetration on this, so hopefully that'll go really quick. All right, we got it clamped down. Going to go ahead and see if we can, not very well, but we're going to go ahead and see if we can weaken that up on both sides and then uh, get it cut. All 
All right, I'm going to get the very edges. That's a good place to get it to start cracking, so I'm going to make sure it's cut all the way through right there. All right, let's see if this chisel can do any good with it. Tearing now. Hopefully it's the weld tearing, not the tube. There we go. All right, got it off. Uh, it's pretty thick steel. Didn't deform it. Uh, maybe a little twist, so I'll make sure I straighten that before I put it back on. Didn't cut into the uh, tube here. It actually broke through. The penetration of the weld actually got in the tube deep enough. It pulled some of it away, but not much. Just, uh, just superficial right there. Put a little dent right there when I was driving the chisel in, but it's not too deep that it's going to cause the uh, the inner tube to hit. So we're good there. Going to grind that smooth, straighten this out, and then we'll reposition it. I'll use the same center line. And what we're going to do is simply we're going to take this and put it down here. We can't go right to the bottom because it's too thin right there. It'll, be, it'll just burn back right there. So we're going to come off about three-eighths of an inch. And then we're just going to weld that on almost a full width of itself uh, back down. And hopefully that'll help so uh, he can get this wheel swung around without putting a jack underneath it. So let me get this cleaned up a little bit. We'll mark the locations. I'll grind off this uh, galvanized or zinc plating. And then we'll get it prepped, ready for weld. All right, we got to clamp down. Um, I'm using the same line that where the old welds were as my reference to make sure I put this back in the same spot. Uh, it didn't seem like the crank was in the wrong uh, location, so I'm just going to duplicate what was already done. I'm not taking it all the way apart. I don't plan on burning through, so I'm not too worried about the inner tube. It's floating around in there. Got the welder set not to the thickness of this material, but to the thickness of this, the thinner tube. So I'll, pro I'll, I'll tack it and then I'll try to make sure most of my heat goes into the heavier plate and not into the tube, otherwise I could burn through. out of the way and get it welded. Okay, just like that, we're all done. Let it cool a little bit. Get some spray paint on it. All right, we got the uh, <coughs> jack, wheel jack reinstalled. As you can see now, it's much higher up, so he won't have to put a jack underneath it to get it off the vehicle, which is the whole purpose of the thing, right? So it'll store out of the way. It won't hit. Uh, it's looks pretty good like it is. Just painted it gray uh, where the welds were. So now I'll have a little more functioning uh, wheel. Okay, that wraps up this project. We were able to get the uh, winch installed nice and secure. All the elect uh, electrical's done, batteries in tight. I put the uh, remote trigger in a Ziploc bag so it just fits right over here next to the battery down inside there, nice and safe. We also modified the uh, tongue jack uh, so he doesn't have to use a floor jack to get it off the truck. And we cleaned up some of the wiring in the back that was kind of dangling down there and not secured very well. So uh, thanks again for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and uh, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next video.